Welcome to the Brad and Taylor Show. Today we have Jennifer Tate with Brookstone Realtors. How's it going, Jennifer? Great. How are you guys? We're good. You're listening to the Brad and Taylor Show, a podcast that inspires entrepreneurs to pursue their passions. We're sitting down with some of the best to learn how they got started and some lessons they learned along the way. Let's go way back when you uh, when you were growing up. What did you want to be when you were growing up? Did you want to be an agent? Uh, no, I never, I think this is the answer a lot of agents give, but I never thought I would be in real estate. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I was a kid, I actually wanted to be an artist. Um, and then as I got a little more mature and found a path, I thought I was going to be a lawyer actually. Um, and then I just decided I needed more of a creative outlet. So I got into design and then it eventually took me into real estate. So no, I did not think I was going to be an agent and I still <laughs> will fight people and say that I'm not in sales because it doesn't feel like sales. <laughs> um, but I did grow up. I had, um, my parents are into real estate, not that they're agents themselves, but they have investment properties and I kind of grew up around the business. So I fell into it pretty easily. I would say I kind of had a head start just by, uh, being surrounded by it as a kid and things, but yeah, did not think I was going to be an agent. I thought I was going to be a lawyer. (laughs) (laughs) Did you go to school for being a, being a lawyer? I started. Yeah. So when I started in college, I started in business law and then I quickly realized I did not like all the terminology and that it would take me a really long time to get where I wanted to be. And so then I switched to interior design. So I actually have a bachelor's in interior design and a minor in architecture. Oh, nice helps in real estate. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it does. Do you um, do the decorating at all for staging? Um, Yeah. So I do offer that to my sellers that I can help them with staging mainly. Um, And then I do, it comes in handy a lot with buyers, especially in this market, because we're so limited on inventory Mm -hmm. that sometimes it takes a different eye to look at things and say, Hey, this, this might not be what you thought it was going to be, but we can make it into that. So it definitely helps. Um, sometimes they think they, you know, can watch HGTV and have demo day and take out walls. And I'm like, Nope, Nope. Because then the yeah. architecture <laughs> part comes in play and I'm like, that's load bearing. It's going to take a little more than that, you know, know, calm down with the sledgehammer. So HGTV <laughs> makes the home renovations look really easy. It does. And I love HGTV, nothing yeah. against it, but they make it look so much more simple than what it is. Mm-hmm. And there's, I see a lot of bad things that people do because I'm out showing them to my buyers. So. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, there's supposed to be something holding that wall up. <laughs> exactly. It's sagging. That's not a good sign. <laughs> yep. So then how'd you go from being a lawyer to want it to be an agent? Well, so a designer, I was a designer. Yep. Um, I never went through with become with law in college. So I was, um, I worked for a custom woodworking company where I designed kitchens, bathrooms and things. And I was also the office manager. So I I've always had a problem where I can't just have one job. I have like multiple roles (laughs) and I still do today. So it's interesting. Um, but I guess. So the biggest reason was I had twins. (laughs) So I was a designer and then I was put on bed rest, strict bed rest. So I couldn't work. And I was off work for a while after I had the babies, obviously. And then I was like, you know what? Real estate, they say that you can make your own schedule, which is actually hilarious now (laughs) because that doesn't happen. (laughs) But um, I thought I could ease into it, start out part-time, Um, I had a good handle on what it really was just because of the experience I had from growing up with my parents and things, um, being in the industry, but that's, that's a reason that I flipped. And then I realized that there really wasn't like a easing into it point. I pretty much went full time, Yeah. (laughs) but it just, I just flip flop schedules with my husband. So my husband had like the nine to five. So I would have the weekends, evenings, which I was used to anyway. So it wasn't that bad and I'm still used to it. What other um, tips and tricks do you have for other working moms who balance the full time with the twins? I mean, twins is a lot alone. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to balance sometimes, but, um, you know, I got in the industry. I actually took the test, the real estate test when they were like, three months old, four months old. I was a little crazy back then. (laughs) I was determined to do it. 
Um, and so they were really young and it was hard. Um, I didn't have a schedule or anything, but I got there. Right. So the biggest thing I tell parents all the time is just to be easy on yourself because your kids love you no matter what. And I understand I work a ton of hours. I do, but my kids also know that I love what I do. So Mm -hmm. I don't feel bad working all weekend because then I can be with them during the week or, you know, they know that I'm passionate about selling real estate and I'm also a manager at our company. So I help agents as well. And they just know that I love it. And, um, I heard a statistic somewhere a couple (laughs) years ago, and they said that parents who work long hours, like more than the typical 40 hour work week and come home to their kids, their kids are still happier than the parent who works the 40 hours and hates their jobs. And those kids that have those parents are more likely to bully in school and things. Mm -hmm. And that really like stuck with me for some reason. And I think about it all the time because even when we're tired and exhausted and working all these crazy hours, because it's not traditional hours that we work in real estate, it's still worth it because your kids know that you're doing something you love. I can see that, especially if you come home and you're still happy. You love what you do. You don't hate it. You're happy about it. So I can see yep, that like project. Yesterday, one of my twins, he's like, can I help you write the offer? I'm like, yep, come on, sit on the lap. <laughs> you know, here's what we're doing. So yeah, if you make it fun for them, then they get it. Yeah. Yeah. How old are they now? They're six. Nice. Nice. Yep, how- six-year-old identical twin boys. <laughs> nice. What is some yep. advice you would give to a, a mom uh, starting out in real estate that, that uh, has twins? <laughs> that has twins. Well, any mom really. Um just, you know, be easier on yourself. Like I said, not to be repetitive, but I think that mom guilt is a hard thing and that can go for working dads as well. It's really hard when you first get in the business because there's so much negative energy about new agents failing when they first get into the business, right? Like 87%, I believe fail within the first year or two of being in the business. I don't know the exact stats, so don't quote me on that, but (laughs) There's a lot of negative energy that you have to push through. So on top of that energy, when you're a parent, it's hard too, because you're like, you have something to prove to yourself and to your kids and to your family. And when you don't get the instant results that you expect to get when you're in real estate, then you feel like you're failing. So I would say just stick with it because Mm -hmm. it doesn't happen overnight. It takes a while. It's very inconsistent. It's a roller coaster. It's up and down. You're busy one minute, you're dead the next. You just have to keep pushing through. I know you um, you use Facebook, you and your team. You guys do like a Facebook Live on once a month, you said, right? (laughs) Yep. Okay. What other marketing tools do you use? Is it just mainly Facebook or what do you guys, you as a team, what do you guys use? Um, We have a lot of things at our company that we offer. Me personally, I have built my brand based on um, relationships, my influence, referrals, past clients. So I am very relationship based. Um, Every agent does it a little different though. That's just what has worked for me. And that's what makes me love it (laughs) because I enjoy doing things like that. Um, But at our company, it, it's all across the board. We have agents yeah. that, you know, our founder of our company, he has a whole coaching program that is dedicated to cold calling. But me, I can tell you, I've never cold called. <laughs> it's not my thing. Um, so me personally, I'm huge relationship based as far as marketing. Yes. On social media, trying to get in front of the video camera more. Um, mm-hmm. And then we have um, the platform KB Core, which has a CRM to manage our clients. It has our website. We can do all sorts of things with that. So, but I, I actually like a lot of the old school ways. So sending mailers to my yeah. database and staying in front of people. That's awesome. How do you do, how, how do you keep relationships with everybody with COVID? Do you go, uh, since you can't go and meet them for anything, how do you, uh, how do you go it's about that a, now? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot harder now because I love people. So when I was in college, I was a bartender for a while. And so I, was used to being in front of people and talking to people on a regular basis. So that is really hard. Um, 
whenever I go into the office and I do see an agent or a client that I haven't seen in a while, I'm like, Oh, I want to hug you even though yeah. I can't. You know? <laughs> um, it's so, it's so strange, but I think that now more than ever, it's more important to stay in touch with those people because mm-hmm. everyone's feeling the same thing. Everyone's feeling, you know, a little more isolated. I think it's getting a little easier as we open up a little more, but we're all going through it together. So it really is as simple as picking up the phone. And like, I send a lot, a lot of random texts. Like I was just thinking about you, <laughs> you know, or call, phone call or, mm-hmm. you know, reaching out, doing, um, zoom meetings with friends, like happy yeah. hours and things. We've been doing a lot of, um, virtual events with our brokerage, with our agents, because we're all feeling it, you know, so clients, family, friends at work, we like being around people. <laughs> yeah. Even yep. the simple text thinking about you, that goes a long way. It does. Mm-hmm. It, it totally does. And then even just past clients, um, a lot of times I'll just shoot them a text and say, Hey, it's been a couple months. Like, what have you done to the house? How are things looking? And they'll, you know, like video call me and give me a tour of what they've done, oh, nice. and, you know, things like that. So I think it means a lot to people just to show that you're thinking about them, especially yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh. Would you give, um, or what kind of advice would you give to someone who, let me, let me rephrase that. Mm-hmm. Would you give the same advice that you got when you started to someone new? Um, probably With not. With the times uh, being so different right now in the market, yeah. like all of that. Yeah. I mean, the market is way different from when I started. Yeah. Um, And when I started, it was, I, so one of my passions in managing, um, agents is to help them overcome the negativity because that, if you, when you just hear that over and over, like how hard it is to be a new agent, oh my gosh, you have to do this. You have to do that. It starts to make you a little crazy. And then you start to doubt yourself and you start to believe these people. Yeah. And I really had to push through that when I first started because even coworkers at the brokerage, you know, and not everyone, there were some great people, but you just have to realize who you want to surround yourself with. And um, I really had to like seek out people to surround myself with and grow from and learn from. So I think that you just have to make, be aware of what you surround yourself with when you're first starting out yeah. because that will, you know, kind of come off and play into your mind. If you are just surrounded with doubt, um, you definitely need support from your family and friends. Um, my parents were very supportive. They actually like paid for the class. They're like, yep, this is your thing. Like they knew it was my thing before I knew it was. Yeah. Well, they you were know, in real estate it, though, right? That's what you said earlier. Well, yeah, they had yeah. background. They weren't agents, but they okay. had background in real estate. So like uh, my dad was an appraiser. They had rental okay. properties, things like that. So they knew it before I did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, they could see the potential <laughs> in you. <laughs> Yeah. It's funny now because I'll say, you know, I'll be like, oh my gosh, yeah, I'm working 80 hours this week. And most people are like, why do you work? They don't get it. They're like, why do you work so much? Why would you do that to yourself? My parents, they don't even ask. They're like, yep, mm -hmm, that's you. Cause they know I love it. They know it's worth it. And that's kind of how they, they taught me to be, they taught me to be a hard worker. So, um, they don't doubt it, but you definitely need some support. So if you don't have it from your spouse or your family, it's going to be tougher. So you, you definitely need to go out and find that support system. Mm -hmm. Um, I surrounded myself with some of the best agents at my company and I still talk to them this day. And that's actually how I ended up at Brookstone because the Brandon Mulrennan, I worked with him and then he brought me with him, you know, and it was like, I wanted to learn from the best people. So I definitely say as a new agent to try to learn from the best and those people actually love you for it because you're like, I'll go show a house for you. I'll do an open house for you. And they're like, yes. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Now I have someone and you're learning from them too. So it's almost like you're working for free just to get the knowledge and experience, but Mm -hmm. you kind of have to do that when you first get into the industry. Yeah. What kind of goals do you have going forward in the next five years with your business? Oh, geez. Or personal. Um, It could be personal as well. If you. (laughs) Yeah. um, So goals, goals. Um, I want to 
help more families find houses. So um, just a number count of my transactions. I have yeah. a goal in mind of where I want to be. Um, have just a small team established so that I have a little more flexibility in my schedule with mm-hmm. family time and things. Um, and then with the brokerage, I mean, because I'm I'm a pretty big part in Brookstone yeah. that just started with, uh, like two years ago. Um, we're evolving and growing too. So I'm going to be part of that development as well. And um, I guess a personal goal, which kind of ties into business is I do want to start a nonprofit. Okay. So we have, um, we have a charity kind of connected to Brookstone that we um, around Christmas time help families. We um, adopt families and things. So I'd like to grow that and do some more things with that. Yeah. I know the market is kind of scarce right now. Where do you (laughs) project it going in the next year? Do you think it's going to stay the same? Do you think it's going to change? I think it's going to change. I think that um, 21 is going to be pretty similar to what it is right now, Yeah, which is a big shortage of inventory, which is driving the prices up. But I think it has to change. Yeah. Um, so I, not that I'm not saying we're going to have a crash, yeah. not at all, not anything like what we had, which is what a lot of people not in the industry think, mm-hmm. or they hear things and, you know, kind of believe it, but we're in such a different position now. Um, I don't know exactly where it's going to go because I think there's such a, um, like artificial unemployment rate right now, um, because some people have to be shut down. You know, I think it's starting to loosen up, open up a little more. Um, But I do also think that a lot of corporations are going to be changing the way that they do business and where employees live is going to change. Mm -hmm. Um, I think people are going to move around a lot more because they can now. (laughs) We're already seeing it a little bit. So I definitely think it's going to change. I just don't think we're going to have like a major fallout, like what a lot of people are saying we're going to have but I think this year is going to be very strong yeah people are definitely making moves with all of this pandemic stuff (laughs) it's interesting I actually did a poll on my um Instagram story once and a couple weeks back and I said um if you could move due to your job, if you could work remote and live anywhere, would you? Right. And about half said yes, half said no. And then I said, um, if you were to move due to politics controlling what you can do, would you? And there was like 85% said yes. So it's yeah. just really interesting kind of getting in the mindset of what other people are thinking. So I like um, kind of throwing stuff out there like that and getting different people's opinions, but it's interesting. It's interesting times right now. I've never seen a market like this. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. <laughs> yep. So true. Well, um, with that said, we got one more question. It's Taylor. a random one, a very random oh, question. We oh didn't, boy. we didn't prepare you for this. Yeah. One. You're not going to be prepared for this one. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> if animals could talk and you can think like, what would your kids say with this too? If animals okay. could talk, which one would be the grumpiest and why? Oh, what animal would be the grumpiest? I know. Ooh, it's a tough one. I would say like a tortoise because they live <laughs> forever, but they're so <laughs> slow. They can't do anything fun. <laughs> like, would you want to be a tortoise? Oh, I like, don't think so. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What about you guys? What would you be? I said I a, you I said a possum. I said you? a possum at first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just look grumpy. Yeah. Yeah, they do. I know. I like the tortoise though. Don't they live to like, what is, aren't they like 200 years old sometimes? I don't know. They, they live crazy. to be older than the owners. Like the yeah. tortoise will have like three different owners because wow. they outlive all of them. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So wow. I feel like I'd be pretty grumpy. Just like, I don't know. Yeah. You know, how many highlights of the day? They <laughs> remind me of like an life. Eeyore, a tortoise, <laughs> right. like just another day. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, exactly. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Well, um, is well, there anything else you want to share with everybody before we go? I don't think so. So um, we, how yeah. can they, uh, how can people find you, follow you, and then uh, get a hold of you? 
Um, so I am on social media. So Facebook, Jennifer Tate, T-A-I-T -T is my last name. And then on Instagram, I'm Jen Tate 248 Yes, I know it rhymes. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then if you want to call or text me for any anything, feel free. 248-462-3050 is my cell phone number. Awesome. Jen Tate 248 That's rhymey. Yeah, I that like is, it. That's going to stick with people. <laughs> yeah, yep. that's what I was hoping for. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that, that's uh, thanks for being on and um, uh, joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Are these working? There we go. Oh, there we go. I think they're working. Should we tell them? Uh, Mine keeps falling. It doesn't like my voice. What do we got to tell them? Subscribe. Subscribe? What do we do? We got to point out? Hey, I think there's a subscription button. Like, it might be. Um, it might be there. It might be right there, too. Somewhere. Somewhere. Find it. It's red. Yeah. It's and red. it's blue. It's green. I don't really know. It's, it's a color. This mic isn't even attached. Did you plug these in? Well, I guess uh, I wonder if they can hear us. Yeah, I wonder if they hear us. Well, we should probably tell them if, if they can hear us. We should probably tell them also give us a five star review for listening to on Apple. That'd be cool. Five, five star stars, review. guys. Share it with everybody they can think of. We won't but, take four stars. I mean, I don't even think these are on. I mean, this no, is, I don't think this is working. This is not working. <laughs>